All right, everyone, welcome. Um, my name is Alda, uh, with me is Victor, and we're both data engineers at Etsy. And uh, we work on Airflow as a platform um, at Etsy. And today we're excited to talk to you all about DACTest, which is a complementary tool to the testing strategies that we've been hearing uh, on other sessions, especially the one before this one uh, with Daniel. So it's just a different use case and we'll see it. Um, these are the high level points that we'll talk about today. First, a couple of stats about um, Airflow at Etsy, then we'll see how we decided to divide uh, different kind of use cases at, at, at Etsy, um, depending on some like uh, roles. And then we'll talk about the, what that problem um, looks like. And then I'll hand it over to Victor to talk about like some inspirations and solutions that we got from um, other tools. And then um, officially like dive into DAC test, which is the tool that we came up with to kind of fill in a gap uh, for, for testing uh, internally at, at Etsy. And then finally, based on the outcome of it, uh, we'll uh, have a quick call to action for the community. Cool, so um, how does things look like uh, uh, at Etsy in, with respect to Airflow? So a couple quick stats. Um, we right now uh, are handling around uh, 2,100 DAX in production. Most of these are production, sorry, are daily DAX. Um, but we also have weeklies and monthlies and whatnot. Uh, out of those, we are running about 30,000 tasks uh, on a daily basis. And uh, we are handling like hundreds of active users that are looking into our um, environments and uh, try to interact with like the logs and restart tasks and whatnot. And uh, I think the important piece here is that we, as of last year, we wrapped up a huge effort to um, move from seven different uh, VMs using local executor on a pretty old version, 1.10 to 3, uh, and we moved to a Kubernetes cluster uh, using Kubernetes executor to, and version 2.6.3. We haven't quite moved to the la latest one because there are some outstanding bugs uh, related to uh, latencies, and so we'll eventually get there. Um, and speaking about the migration, um, during that period is when uh, this, we decided to start from scratch and uh, kind of build things the right way. And so we started conducting user in interviews. And so for that, um, we detected multiple types of users for, um, for Airflow. Um, that involved like data engineers, as we all know, but also uh, product engineers, ML engineers, uh, even analysts. And we broadly categorized those into two like sections, right? The first one was the DAG owner, and the second one is like a platform developer. Um, and really, a DAG owner is uh, really the majority of our user space. It uh, is around 80% of our user space. Um, as the name implies, they are the people that really create and modify the DAGs and interact with the UI. They probably look at, at the logs or clear tasks and uh, that kind of thing. And they may be on callers as well. That means that they are part of a pager duty rotation. And uh, they may be paged for uh, DAGs that are not necessarily, uh, they're not necessarily familiar with. Um, and, but they need to find a, a root cause for those as well. And the important piece here is that uh, they may not be super focused on Docker, Python environments, or like e even Airflow components at all. And, that this is important, and we'll talk about why this is uh, crucial. And for example, in, in the case of platform builders, uh, it's the minority of our users. It, that's us as well. Um, we enable the DAC owners to build uh, efficient DACs um, in production and try to make things easier by creating sensors, operators, macros, etc. And the important thing here is that we personally are more familiar with Docker and Python, and we don't care about like doing whatever is needed to set up an environment and to test things in there. So that's the crucial part. Like every single um, document out there t tends to tell you that uh, you have to be this kind of user, like the platform builder, anyone who is like into Python environments or like uh, anyone who uses Docker, it's, but that's not necessarily the case. In our case, um, most of our users don't even care about this. They just want to have an environment where they can just drop their DAX, no matter what there is in there, they just want it to run end-to-end -end and not care about anything else, basically. 
Um, so that's, um, that's the dichotomy that we have there. Um, and so really the problem starts manifesting like this. Um, we have users that, as many of you probably know, um, if users don't have a quick way to iterate, what, what, what would that, what they will do is just iterate in production directly. And so this is just a quick example. Someone decided to create a DAG and maybe it passed CA checks, right? The arguments were correctly placed, but then when he was starting running this, um, this DAG, they noticed that it was not working the way that they expected. And so they added another commit to fix a parameter and, and another one and another one. And so that's a symptom that we, we've been seeing quite a bit. And just, that's just a symptom of uh, a missing uh, testing strategy. And so another one is uh, some symptoms to um, DAC versioning. And we see this, we used to see this in the legacy instance where uh, there were multiple copies of the same DAC with different suffixes and different versions. And so what we can see here is that some of these are turned off and that means that um, they're no longer used. And so we, we think that DAC versioning is gonna help quite a bit on, on this front but it just goes to say that it is hard to uh, really test in production or have a way to test things. Um, and so there are some alternatives out there. Um, if, you, if you were here on the previous session, you probably heard about dag.test. And even there is a CLI command for, uh, to test like DAGs directly on, on your local. However, these involve, in our case, installing complex dependencies. We have some additional dependencies on top of Airflow and uh, that wiring uh, it is, is, is complicated for us. And so it's, it's kind of complicated to, to force our users to do this. Uh, another option for this is, is using Breeze. And Breeze is, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, it's just a CLI command that lets you um, create a, a new environment from scratch using Docker Compose. Uh, it's pretty useful for us maintainers, but it's not necessarily useful for um, for other people that really don't care about Docker or Python environments. And so they, what they really want is just to point to a DAG and just test that out. Um, and this of course involves some um, setup with respect to Kalima and Docker desktop, which most of our users don't want to do or find it hard. Uh, also, they may have some resource restrictions. That means that running Docker locally uh, may, um, like starve their computers uh, if they're running some complicated ML process, like a, they may be running a, a quick uh, model on their local and just adding this level of, uh, of pressure in terms of resources uh, is, is something that we don't want to, to add to our users. Um, and something else is related to permissions. Um, they, if, if we ask them to run things locally, then that means they will, um, they will face uh, four or threes, right? They, they may not have access to specific permissions or specific resources because they're using the, their own like user uh, credentials. And so uh, we want to kind of isolate that so that they can run no matter where they are running from. And yeah, there are some other cloud offerings out there, uh, but they typically ask you to create a different environment and kind of like uh, replicate the DAG and tear the environment down once it's done. And so it's, that's kind of complicated. So really the problem is that uh, users really want to have a simple way to test the DAG no matter what, and they should have minimum requirements. That means just a single installation and that's it. We don't want to have multiple steps because users tend not to do it. Uh, and if we make it complicated for them, they'll start both complaining or finding ways around it. And so that's, uh, that's something we wanted to avoid. And especially testing in productions because we know it's risky. And now I'll hand it over to Victor. Thanks, Aldo. So inspiration and solutions. So what did we come up with to stop Swiper from swiping? So we think the things that we knew we shouldn't do, we shouldn't have users SSHing or kubectl cube execing or kubectl copying, uh, you know, DAG files from their local into into like a production or an, uh, even another dev instance. Uh, we shouldn't have I think Cloud Composer does this, sorry, Philip. Uh, GSUtil copy files to, to some bu random bucket and have users uh, have that, uh, that permission. Um, Breeze, we shouldn't have DAG owners be required to, to download some large image. 
and, and run that image and have that image start up the, the web server, the scheduler, the trigger. And, uh, and finally, pip installing Airflow is a pain. Someone said 700, I think Jarek said 700 uh, transitive dependencies. So that's, that's not fun. So it, whatever this test thing, whatever this test solution is, it's gotta be as simple as possible. Uh, some inspiration we look to, Databricks with their notebooks. Uh, the Spark shell is really cool, right? Like we, we saw like users using it to, to connect to a, a remote cluster. Uh, there's Apache Beam where you can run uh, with a Dataflow runner or, or local runner. And just general client server architecture. You know, like we, we thought that that was a good kind of strategy for, for what we wanted. So back to these two archetypes, there's, there's a DAG owner that, you know, doesn't have too many tools. And then there's, there's us platform developers who's got Kalima, Breeze, OpenAI, Docker Desktop, all these things, Docker, Docker Compose. Uh, and we want to really empower the, the person on the right. Sorry, left. Uh, so DAG test, enter DAG test. Uh, so DAG test attempts to empower users with the minimum requirements necessary to run a DAG. Uh, it's not this huge PyPy uh, pit, pit package. It's not uh, as big. And, and this is this is just Airflow, right? It's not. It doesn't include the transitive dependencies. Um, we created this uh, this package called Etsy DAG test, which is kilobytes. Literally, just requests is is the only thing it really uses. Um, and it's packaged in our internal PyPy, but I'll tell you that it's super simple to set up, so you can set it up on your own installation as well if you, if you want to. Uh, and the idea behind it is users send DAGs to, to a test environment that, that runs with special test SAs, service accounts, that don't have access to write to production buckets. Uh, so what does it look like? Literally just pip install this, this thing, it's, it's 11 kilobytes, do it, uh, and run DAG test path to your DAG. And that is it. Execution date, if you want to. Otherwise, we'll infer it. Pass dry run, whatever. Uh, you can't read this, so I'm going to skip it. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, this is what you'll get. So, so at the very bottom, if, if you can, really squint your eyes, uh, you'll see a link provided. This actually came from a, uh, the idea came from, from Facebook, where we, at Facebook, we were using something called Data Swarm, and they had a tool called Tester. Uh, and, and it pop like the same kind of the same kind of thing pops up where you run tester path to your DAG right and then you just get a link to to your DAG and then boom your DAG is running uh, and you don't have to do anything else you don't have to, you don't have to start a web server you don't have to start a scheduler like none of this stuff right you, you you literally get a link boom you go there you see you see the tasks running and and you can inspect or maybe you get errors and you fix them uh, so want to dive really deep into the internal so that you you can. Do this yourself as well if you'd like to. Um, also small, super sorry, uh, but if you squint really hard, you can see we are using the base image of Airflow in this in this custom Docker file, and then we uh, just add a couple things. Uh, app get update. I don't know what we do. Proc ps. Oh, P for ps, and then h top just for diagnostics. Um, we uh, some some test requirements. So we we install pytest. For example, so we can run unit tests as well, and then and then that's that's pretty much it. Start a G Unicorn uh, so Flash server. So what happens when users call DAG tests? Also really sorry. Uh, also really small. I'm sorry. Uh, use but users pip install. They run DAG test. We make a request to to our uh, to a service that takes a local file and puts it on the NFS mount. Once it's on the NFS mount. The ad hoc Airflow instance has access to that file. It can read that file. It can create a DAG bag, a single da a DAG bag with a single file, test it for, for import errors, right? We can also run additional unit tests for it. We can do all this without, you know, spinning up a data proc or an EMR cluster or whatever that'll cost a lot of money. We, we, we test all these things in advance and it takes seconds to do. Uh, and then eventually the, the uh, deployment, which is called the test API, will start up a pod. And that pod will run a really simple command, Airflow DAGs backfill. You might know this command. Uh, you might have used it before. It's a super powerful command, but it's, uh, I think the community doesn't love it as much as some of the other commands. It, it doesn't get as, it doesn't get like the open AI support that some of the other commands have, like air, the trigger command. But it is extremely powerful and it's used for, for, uh, for backfilling large, large ranges of dates. We basically just fill that in, call a subprocess, and run it. 
And we, we run that on an isolated pod so that we can roll the test API. If we have updates, we can roll the test API. It, it's not like a, a, a single pod that's like running all these processes. It, it is a pod that is instantiating pods, kind of like the Kubernetes executor, instantiating pods, and those pods run Airflow DAGs backfill and are responsible for you know, coordinating the, uh, the, the test there. Uh, and one other thing that I wanted to talk about was being able to isolate the test in, in production environments. We, we don't have this down perfectly, but there, there was an ideal in, in, the, in the very early stages of this where like, if you, if you run with DAG tests, you're gonna use ad hoc SAs. You're going to not be able to write to production you know, some people went to Terraform and changed that, but 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 the, the general idea initially was, you know, test is for testing. You can't corrupt production with uh, with DAG test. Um, we use workload identities in GKE to to give us those those ad hoc SAs. Um, it's got its own NFS mount, uh, G, uh, Google File Store, its own quotas too that are separate from production, so we don't have to worry about them inter interrupting production long backfills interrupting production uh, jobs. And the outcome is Dora is happy. So an empowered DAG owner who can safely test DAGs outside production, faster iteration cycles, uh, really, again, like easy to implement, right? You take the base image, add, you know, add flask, add uh, requests. That's, that's really all it is. Um, PRs for, for DAGs. Nowadays, we, like if someone's, you know, writing out a PR, they will not just write out the DAG that they have, but their test plan is, is a DAG test link. And, and the reviewer goes to that link and says, okay, it's a bunch of red. What are you, what are you trying to do to me? Like, I, I don't want to be on the hook for this. Um, users uncover permissions in, in, in ad hoc instead of production. And if they're modifying a large production DAG, they can actually test a single task or a single set of new tasks, you know, instead of having to run it end to end. Uh, so I heard about like the, the talk to, you know, if you want to be a committer of Airflow, you got to make an AIP. I feel like this would be a great AIP, you know, to, if anyone is interested in, in, in starting this Airflow initiative, I'd be happily uh, willing to, to contribute. Uh, there's a gap in OSS and the Airflow DAGs test thing doesn't work as well as Daniel will make it seem, sorry, Daniel, uh, but like you, you can't just SSH, you can't just kubectl into into production and run a bunch of things because you could destroy everything. So, so uh, th this this is the, the the solution that we have, um, and we'd love to hear how other teams are tackling this too. Um, but but we we do think that something like this is really important for Airflow and and for a lot of the users, frankly, of of the of the tool. So that's all I have. Hi. Um... Just wondering, like, what's the difference between Airflow DAG tests and uh, Airflow test DAG? <laughs> um, yeah. So, I think I think one is like the programmatic API call, like start a REPL, right? Um, have a DAG, and then DAG dot test is like the the thing that you run um, programmatically, and then. And then there's Airflow DAGs test, like the, the CLI command. So, so I think that's it's it, it's just something like that. But I'm I'm not. Don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's that. If anyone else knows, please chime in. Uh, so in the example you showed, you did like DAG test and then a path to a specific Python file. Uh, what about cases where your your Python file has dependencies on other Python files or methods or libraries you have yeah have, that's a like, that's a great what do you question. do in that case do you want to take that one okay so awesome question so this was hard because we we have a directory called includes where we we allow people to refactor things into and so sometimes they will make changes to refactored code like they're a function a helper function or something and then want to test that helper function along with this DAG. um so we started out with a really crummy solution where uh we, we would like, um, actually this might still be the solution. <laughs> so, so we use ASTs um, to, to figure out like which, which import path, right, is, is, uh, is the path that it needs. And then we will modify the import path name to a test import path. So say like uh, you have it in your DAG, you have like import include.help, extra.helpers or something, right? 
uh, we will we'll take your local repo, tar it up, push it to the, sorry, tar it up, push it to the NFS mount, un, untar, un, un, uh, gzip it, and then change the, change the, um, the directory structure so that it becomes like test underscore Unix time underscore like Unix name or something, you know? So, so that part's a little sloppy and like probably a little hacky, but, but that's how we got around that issue and allows people to rely on like this, their local copy of, of, uh, of their local helper functions um, to, to test. Any other questions? Uh, should we expect a uh, AIP from both of you very soon? I, I'm, <laughs> all right, well, I, if there's interest, absolutely. I mean, like, I would love to, you know, get that coveted committer status that everyone's been talking about. Um, I just don't have the time. I just had a kid. Uh, but, but again, like, if anyone is interested in in, in an AIP, like, talk to me. Um, we can work on it together. Like, maybe I can convince you to do it. You know, and and I can help on the side because the kid's hard. But um, but yeah, so so absolutely, like this is something that I would love to to uh, start an AIP for and shepherd and and, and really take to the end. Um, yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Victor and Aldo. Thank you, Kevin. Bye. Thank you, everyone.